webinar, like one of them I think is our good buddy Tim Killian. You probably know Tim. Okay, cool. So thank you everybody for being here. And I think you all know you can be my witnesses. I wear the Veeam hat every day, not just today. So uh, thank you very much. Veeam is one of our amazing partners. They've saved our lives several times in the cloud because our the our cloud offering is based on Veeam. We use Veeam technology for you know helping our clients move their data to the cloud, to our to the GTC cloud. Uh, so if you're interested, let us know. And now I will turn it to the one of the top Veeam engineers. He's done a great job for our team. He knows his stuff. He's going to keep it very technical. Any technical questions, please answer it today. You know, he'll, he'll answer it for you today. Take it from your time. All right, guys. First off, thanks for joining today for this, uh, this webinar or this uh, you know, session here. Now, I am the Southwest SE. So my goal, or you know, my goal here is to make sure that you guys have a successful deployment, that you guys get a product that actually works and does what it's supposed to do. So for today's uh, presentation, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about protecting the enterprise application. So what is the enterprise application, right? So to me, enterprise application is essentially things that the enterprise depends on to work, to move, to go forward. Things like your messaging system, right? Your exchange. If your exchange were to go down and you lose email for the day, how does that impact the business, right? What's that going to do? Right? The same would apply for your SQL Server, your Active Directory. These are all components that are necessary to keep your business going. So what we're here today to talk about is how Veeam is going to back that up, right? How are we going to essentially facilitate that backup of your exchange, your SQL, your SharePoint, your Active Directory infrastructure, right? But that's just part one, right? Backing up is easy. Everybody in the market, everybody in the industry backs up, right? It's not just us. You know, you go out to all any of the competitors, they're going to back up your exchange. They're going to back up your, you know, your Active Directory. But it's the how. How do you do it? How much effort does it take? to actually go into the exchange, back it up, and then recover it? How much effort does it take to back up your SQL server, your, your uh, Active Directory servers? How much effort does that really onto you and your staff, right? So where Veeam is so different in how we do things is that we reduce the amount of administration required when you put these components in place. It's not the same as, oh man, I gotta load all these agents, I gotta load all these different things. Because Veeam, completely agentless, right? We all know, we've all heard it. You know, Veeam is agentless across the board. That's the same for applications. Exchange, SharePoint, SQL, totally agentless. Okay, so as we back it up, we'll give you that granular level of recovery. So today, we're really going to go over all those components, how we back up and how we recover. Oh, I like to keep these, uh, these sessions kind of open. So if you have a question, you know, like interactive, if you have a question, you know, something you want to ask, feel free, ask the question. I'll repeat it so the people online can hear it. And then at that point, we can go ahead and, uh, you know, help uh, answer any you might have in case. Again, I'm the technical guy, not the sales guy. So if you have technical concerns or questions, feel free to ask it of me. So first, an agenda. What are we going to talk about today? First, application aware processing. How we back it up, right? How we keep the actual application consistent. You know, we all have Exchange Server, SQL Server, highly transactional, right? How do we make sure that when you actually back it up, you're not losing data? You're not corrupting data, right? Because the worst thing that we can have happen is that when you back it up, you go to recover, it's corrupt. Right? You don't want that to happen. So how does Veeam facilitate, address those issues of keeping it transactionally consistent during a backup? Virtual labs. You know, how we leverage our virtual lab technology to facilitate object level recovery. You know, the ability to really take a, you know, I deleted a user or I modified an object within the user account. How can I restore that data? How can I take that data and put it back to the original location? All right, we're going to go ahead and talk about how we leverage our virtual lab technology to facilitate our universal item recovery. Granular item recovery of exchange of your SQL, of your Active Directory, right within Veeam without the need of any agents or anything else. We'll talk about Veeam Explorer, right? the ability to directly integrate to a backup and run object level recovery. You know, we talk about all the time, you want to go ahead and restore an exchange item? How much effort, how much work does that usually take? Well, I'm going to show you that same process today in about three minutes. All right. And of course, product demo. Maybe I want to show you is the actual product working, that the actual product is actually doing something. Right? I can talk about it all day long, but it makes a lot more sense if you actually see it. 
So one of the things that we're going to do today is actually show you the product, actually show you how we can go ahead and facilitate object recovery of change, SQL, Active Directory. Okay? And at the end, we'll do some question and answers. You know, if you didn't have any questions during the presentation, at the end you will have some. Feel free to ask it at that point. So first and foremost, application web processing. So this is leveraging, you know, for in the Microsoft world, VSS. So that's the ability to create a shadow copy or quiesce an application during a backup. So why do, you, why do people care, right? If Veeam is backing up a virtual machine, right, I'm backing up a server, I create a VMware snapshot, right? Why do I need to create a VSS snapshot also? What does that really do for me? Well, what this is really doing, this is going to facilitate within the VM, the application within it, a pause, a quiesce. Hey, hold off or write to a shadow copy while we initiate our VMware-based snapshot. You do this so you can ensure that when the backup is going to run, that the transactions that occurred within the database, you know, your SQL Server Exchange Server, doesn't get corrupted, doesn't get lost, right? So we're leveraging Microsoft VSS to facilitate the initial back to initial um, VSS snapshot. Then we do a VMware-based snapshot. Again, whether you're using VMware or Hyper-V, we leverage that technology to create a volume or image-based snapshot of it. And then at that point, if you have in your infrastructure, like a, you know, a SAN, like an HP SAN or something along those lines, you can actually integrate Veeam directly into it to do another LUN level snapshot to then at that point alleviate the backup uh, resources would be required on your actual virtual infrastructure. So really the takeaway from here is this. We're gonna leverage Veeam to facilitate that application aware processing, to ensure that our Exchange server, our SQL server, you know, and even in certain instances, Oracle servers, right, are gonna be able to back up and the transactions are gonna be consistent we try to recover. What's VSS? VSS is volume shadow copy service. Keeping it technical, but if not. <laughs> again, if you have a question about how we leverage VSS, again, you know, some people are saying, well, VSS is a Microsoft specific component, right? It's not in the Linux. Well, I have a lot of servers that are on my enterprise applications that are running in Linux. Well, how does that work, right? How do you facilitate something along those same lines? Well, much like how we leverage VSS for Microsoft systems, we leverage VM tools within you know, the virtual infrastructure to facilitate that quiescing of applications. And with VM tools, you do what we call, for in Oracle, for instance, we do what we call pre-freeze and post-thaw. Those are scripts that essentially put the database or the tables in a backup mode, which will then facilitate that quiescing and then facilitate the whole backup process. The same would apply for MySQL, anything along those lines that are running on a Linux environment. Who here actually, let me ask, from a show of hands, who here actually uses um, Linux in their environment with their enterprise applications. Exactly, right? It's more commonly seen nowadays than before because again, Linux works just as great and it facilitates the same process. So you, there's an ability for Veeam to accommodate those same needs, okay? Any questions on this and how we facilitate this? So once you have a quiesce or once you have a valid backup, well, what do we do with it, right? Okay, I got a great, I got a backup here. What, what do you want me to do with this backup? So within Veeam, we're going to leverage what we call our virtual lab technology to facilitate now the recovery of those backups, right? Because yeah, just backing up the system is one thing, but now I need to be able to take the data out of it. I need to be able to extract out my, my SQL tables. I need to be able to extract out my exchange object. I need to be able to extract out my Active Directory components, right? So how do we do that? So we're gonna leverage our virtual lab first off to create this virtual environment, this, this, this isolated environment within our virtual infrastructure, right? That's gonna be fenced off. So notice here, it's fenced off. So your production environment can communicate into this virtual environment, but items within this virtual environment cannot communicate out. That way, what we're gonna do is we create this little isolated environment running off of the Veeam backup repository, right? So all the storage, so we're not moving any data to our production door storage, everything is running off of a backup infrastructure, and we're gonna spin these guys up, and then at that point we can do comparisons, and then give you the ability to do object level recovery with those comparisons, leveraging what we call our application groups. You create these application groups within your virtual apps to basically do things like Active Directory recovery. You do, you know, exchange recovery, well store recovery, or SQL recovery, directly do this. Now, that's just one aspect of it, right? If I can spin up VMs, within my virtual infrastructure, within this isolated environment, 
I can spin up any applications, right? It doesn't necessarily have to just be SQL or Exchange or whatever. If I have another set of applications that I want to spin up, you absolutely can do that. And then leveraging technology that you have, right? like let's say Oracle, for instance, right? I want to recover some, I want to extract some Oracle data out of my environment. I can spin up my Oracle database inside this isolated virtual lab, connect via Toad, right? Connect via the enterprise manager directly to that because all it is is an IP address. Right? So now you have full visibility into this virtual machine without affecting production. Now that opens the door for a lot of other things too, right? Application testing. Right? We all have test environments, right? Development environments, staging environments, production environments. You leverage now the ability to spin up these isolated environments and patch, test code, right? Test patch deployment. Or do a pre-run of your production deployment. Yeah? A lot of times people will go ahead and do development. You know, great code. Put it in test. Works like a champ. Put it in production. Spend the week when troubleshooting. <laughs> right? Why? Why? Because what you just deployed in production on a system is not the same system you deployed in test. Your yeah, production and test are meant to be similar, but they're not the same system. So with this technology, you can actually leverage that technology. You spin up these, your production systems, deploy your code, test it, and then you know, see if it works, and then take that same process and put it into production. Now you know what's going to happen. All right. So that's really our virtual lab technology, to give you the ability to really do all those functionality and leverage the ability to do the itemized pool recovery within the virtual lab. Questions on how that works? Again, feel free to ask. I am the tech guy. <laughs> Real quick question. Mm -hmm. so when you spin this up, mm -hmm. um, you've got your main backups that are, are stored somewhere. But mm -hmm. when you spin up the virtual lab, where did the delta struct mm -hmm. in your Absolutely. So with, on the Veeam server itself, there is a, uh, oh, repeat, sorry. So the question was, you spin up these virtual machines. They're changing. You know, data is being modified, right? Now you have the backup that is not being modified. So where is it all going? So what Veeam does is Veeam's going to go ahead and take what we call our Delta files, essentially those log files, the Delta files, put it onto what we call our, uh, our NFS data store. And it's going to reside there until you either, you know, you dispose of that virtual app. And then at that point, it just discards the changes. So those changes will stay in effect. It will just be written to that location. And then at that point, you know, once you're done with it, it just discards it. The actual backup itself never actually gets modified. It doesn't get changed. It doesn't get updated. Nothing happens to the actual backup. So all the deltas get written off somewhere else and then get discarded when it's done. So yeah, it, essentially on your Veeam backup server, you'll have a repository locally associated to it. And it will all write to that repository. Does that answer your question? Okay. Any other questions? Absolutely. So here in the virtual lab proxy, oh, repeat the question. Sorry. Uh, the question is, how do you address the conflict of IPs within your production infrastructure since you have two machines with the exact same name and exact same IP address, right? So within Veeam, when you go ahead and leverage our virtual lab technology, what we're going to do is we're going to have what we call a virtual lab proxy. This virtual lab proxy is like a natting device. It's going to go ahead and masquerade your IP address. So here, if your production network is 192.168.1.x, right, this proxy appliance is going to go ahead and create a natted or masquerade IP range, 192.168.254.x. Right? And so anything that goes into 254.x will then be remapped to 192.168.1.x, whatever your production IP address is. So you will communicate to that virtual machine inside that virtual lab via some masqueraded IP. That will ensure that all the communication here stays local. Nothing actually travels out, but you have the ability to communicate in. So in here, you could be you know, some developer sitting at their desk with Toad, and you want to access your Oracle server from last night. Well, instead of having him you know, go, to, go to backup and restore that to another environment, spin it up. Spin it up right within the virtual lab. Give them an IP address. Go to 192.168.254.x. You've connected. Now you can extract your data. You can do whatever you want because now you have full visibility inside the machine just like it was in your production environment. Any questions on that? Any more questions? Again, great question. <clears throat> so once you have your application groups, once you've you know, defined all these components in your environment, you can then go to do are what we call universal application item recovery. So this is the ability for us to communicate from the backup storage 
to the hypervisor into this virtualized, you know, virtual lab, and then commute, essentially take data from the virtual lab, pass it through the virtual appliance to your production infrastructure. Right. So it's essentially taking, you know, whether it's tables, rows, whether it's a script you want to run on the SQL side, whether it's a user you've deleted and restored, right? Or if it's an exchange object from like 2003, you know, some people use, still use 2003 Exchange, and there's no real nice way of running recovery. You can do all that through here. You have your own internal application, right, that you've built. A lot of times, you go out to the market, you'll see specific applications for specific backup solutions, right? Here, you can have any application, spin it up in your virtual lab, use your homegrown, you know, solution to integrate with it, and you can connect to it. So this is really the power of having a virtual lab within your infrastructure. Again, Active Directory, ability to really recover your users, your groups, your computers directly out of this virtual lab. It's kind of nice, right? If you somebody deleted somebody or somebody modified a user account and you want to find out the difference between the two, it'll actually show you the differences. It'll say, hey, this user account has this description, this user account has this description. What do you want to do? Right? So it'll actually give you that information right away within the uh, recovery screen. Cool. SQL Server, the same thing. We'll give you the ability to do, you know, you want to restore the entire database? Sure. You want to restore a, t a table within the database? Sure. You want to run a query to extract out specific content within your database? Sure. But from what I've seen in the industry and how I've worked with customers, DBAs, let's just admit, they're territorial, right? That's my database. That's my system. I don't want you doing anything to it. I'm going to run my own backup solution. Right? I want to control that myself. So a lot of times, the DBAs will manage their own you know, database management of the backups. A lot of that's because they don't trust anything else. They do it themselves. Well, with virtual labs and with Veeam, what you could do now is say this, hey, Mr. DBA, I understand that you have a flat file that you want us to back up every night. But on top of that, what if I told you I could spin up that VM from last night's backup and you can connect to it and extract that whatever you want without having to restore that flat file? It takes me two, 10 minutes and you have access. Right? So instead of having him create the database table, provision storage for that database, right? Because that database isn't you know, empty. It's got to have data in it. You just spin it up. Here you go. Extract out whatever information you want to extract out. Once you have it, tell me, it's gone. Again, giving the database, the DBAs, the ability to control what it is they want to do. Instead of telling them, or instead of asking them, hey, what query do you want me to run? Oh, what table do you want me to restore? You say, here's an IP address. Have at it. Use Management Studio, connect to it, extract whatever you want. Any questions on that? On just provisioning that for people? Okay. And again, Exchange Server. Exchange Server is kind of unique to, uh, to this scenario because there's two different ways to recover Exchange items. Veeam just recently released what we call our VEX, which is our Veeam Explorer for Exchange, which I'll get back and get into a little bit later. Does not have to leverage your virtual lab. But if you're looking at Exchange 2003 or Exchange 2007, you know, components that are you know, not the latest version 2010 or 2013, then you leverage a virtual lab to essentially do the same thing. Do object level recovery of Exchange items. I want to go to Exchange. I want to go ahead and extract out data. Okay. Needless to say, I'm going through this relatively quick because I want to actually show you the product demo because I want to show you what it looks like actually with, the, with a system. And then Universal Wizard, kind of what we talked about earlier. The ability to spin up entire environments inside of this virtual infrastructure, inside of your backup infrastructure, to facilitate the recovery or extraction of data from pretty much any application. Because if you think about it, if I can spin up any sets of VMs within this isolated environment, what's to prevent me from using anything, right? Whether it's a web server, whether it's my Oracle server, or some server or some component that we've built in-house, right? As long as I have a front end to connect to it, I can work with it. Okay. So those are usually those are the components that leverage our UR or our universal application item recovery. Next thing we'll talk about is our Veeam Explorer for Exchange. So this is an actual screen print of what it looks like to restore an Exchange object in Veeam. To get to this point here takes about two minutes. Right? Usually exchange recovery takes a little bit of time, right? Because you have to communicate to the exchange server. You have to have that channel. Then at that point, you have to understand what it is you want to do and leverage the agents associated to that recovery. Veeam, to get to this point, I find the backup. I right-click, restore exchange. This opens up this window. Literally, in a few minutes, you'll have the ability to run object level recovery. And this gives you the ability to browse all the way through to the user, 
to the components within the user, calendar items, contacts, in rest. I can do searches. So the e-discovery functionality, right? I want to, no one has, who here has one email in their email box? One, one, yeah, exactly. Most people I know never delete items. Why? I don't know. It's because it looks better to have a large mailbox, I guess, right? <laughs> Until the admin yells at you and says, you have two terabytes, or whatever big your mailbox is. Then at that point, you start deleting, but not you know, until somebody forces you to delete, right? So here, you can run searches. Find the email you want to extract, and then at that point, you know, present it. You can restore it back to the original location. You can restore it as a PST file, as a message file. I can select the entire user, export the folder as a PST, right? Maybe delete it somebody. I deleted that user account. I don't want to have to recreate, associate the mailbox. It takes too long. Let me just export out the PST, export out the mailbox as a PST, map that over to my account, extract that whatever I want at that point. Provide it to legal. Who knows, right? Whatever the situation may present itself. But you have that ability directly within the uh, RVMS support for exchange to do that type of recovery. We also do the same for SharePoint. Who here uses SharePoint? Who here has tried to recover something from SharePoint? How long did it take you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, love SharePoint, great tool, right? But recovery of items from SharePoint is not the most straightforward process. There's a, there's a, there's a process associated, right? There's a process because you have to determine the metadata, you have to determine the blob, connect it to, and then extract out that data. Because SharePoint is essentially a big SQL server, right? With blob content, which is a binary large object, and the metadata associated together in this big database. Veeam created this Veeam support for SharePoint because we saw that we saw that issue in the market right now. A lot of people having a lot of problems restoring SharePoint items. Here? So what does the blob stand for? Binary large object? Binary large object. Yeah. Sorry. Did that make sense to people? This is a big file. <laughs> right? So that's how SharePoint got over there. Right? Yeah. Well, there's Microsoft got smart because when they first created this, uh, their, their database, right, everything was combined in their database, and then they said, well, you know, database size of like 10 terabytes is not good for business because it's very slow. <laughs> so they created what we call RBS, which is Remote Blob Store, that takes that blob and puts it to a file system. It's still a database pointer, right? It doesn't change the fact that it's a database pointer, so, you know, it's still overhead, but at least now it's not in the database. So there's a lot of things you can do with SharePoint, but what Veeam did was Veeam said, okay, we see that there's an issue. We're going to give you the ability directly out of your, view, your SharePoint server backup, point to your SharePoint database, right click, say restore SharePoint item. It will mount that database, present you with the collections, the sites, you know, and all the components, all the documents underneath it. Just a right click functionality away. And you can restore. Literally within a few minutes, you can restore your object. Again, these are things that, you know, would, are built to help make things more efficient. Yeah, can you recover? Absolutely, with the current solution. But like you said, it took me two days. Who wants to spend two days to restore a file? You know, we had another client that spent two days restoring their exchange object. Why? You know, leverage Veeam, leverage those built-in components, and it will help you get things done quicker. Okay? Any questions so far? Perfect. We can do it on time. Um, additional restore options. One of the things, you know, an enterprise application could be your file system. Right? I have a lot of files that i got to manage and maintain. Of course, Veeam out of the box, file out recovery, not only within the backup console, but through the web. So, you know, within your infrastructure, you might have a help desk. I'm assuming everybody here has help desk. And I'm assuming everybody has a help desk that calls up and says, hey, backup admin, can you restore this file for me? Backup admin says, okay, give me 15 minutes, let me log into the, the, the backup server, and I'll restore it for you. Through our web-based interface now, through the enterprise, you can say, hey, help desk, instead of calling me, I'm going to give you access to those servers, and you can restore it yourself, all via the web, without having to actually interface directly to the backup console. Right? So essentially just you know, delegating that task to somebody else. But you prevent them access to other systems you don't want to have them to restore it to, right? Maybe HR files. You want to maybe designate a person in HR to restore HR files. You can do that also. So you can do delegation of roles also within Veeam to facilitate file level recovery. Okay? And it's all web-based. So they don't need access to the actual backup server to facilitate item or file level recovery uh, within Veeam. Go ahead. I'm sorry? How is that better than volume shadow copy? The question is, how is this better than what volume shadow copy does? Volume shadow copy within, you know, so 
within uh, your, op your operating system, right? You essentially create versions within it. What happens if you lose the operating system? That <laughs> you essentially manages all those shadow copies, right? If you lose the server itself, you pretty much, the ability to go backwards in time is no longer available. So what Veeam is providing the ability to is if you lose, this is, again, it's a backup solution, right? There's many different ways in the environment to give yourself quick access to files, you know, versions, reverse versions, so on and so forth. But it's the, hey, I just lost this disk, or I've just lost my SAN. You know, I've lost that component that houses all that data. How do I recover? Then at that, you know, then go to Veeam, right click, spin it back up, extract out the data. Now you, you still have access to all the previous versions via VSS, the volume shadow copy service, but now you also have the ability to actually, you know, protect yourself from those types of failures. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Great. So with that, demo time. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to pause it here for about a minute or two. I'm going to switch over to my laptop, and I'm going to go ahead and spin up the environment, and we can actually run through a couple of these, uh, couple of these uh, you know, restore operations. Okay, guys? Go ahead and am I muted? Go ahead and mute me if you could. So during the break, we had a question. Uh, one of the things that was one of the questions that was asked is a lot of the components we talked about today. You know, leveraging virtual labs, facilitating that object of recovery. What's the licensing associated to that process? You know, what do I need to have in place to actually accommodate this type of recovery. So what you would need is, at a minimum, the enterprise license. And the enterprise license facilitates virtual lab technology. Now, that's only required for virtual lab technology. So that means the uh, Active Directory recovery, or that's the SQL recovery. But if you're looking at just doing Exchange 2010, 2013, or SharePoint, then at that point, the standard, um, the standard license will give you that capability. You just cannot restore back to the original location. Okay, so if I had a, a email that I want to restore back to the original location, you have to do that. You, you have to restore it to a, uh, uh, either as an MSG file or a PST file. Okay. That was a, you know, so I want to make sure that we differentiate between the licensing models in Veeam. Again, I'm the, I'm the SE, so that's about the extent of my, of my uh, <laughs> licensing knowledge. Okay, so what I have on screen right now is the actual Veeam backup server. So this is actually running on my laptop. So forgive if there's any kind of lagging in between here. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run recovery of an Active Directory object, run recovery of a SQL object, run Exchange recovery and SharePoint recovery during this present during this demonstration. So you can actually each one of those components actually function in the wild. Okay. So what I'm going to do here first and foremost, I'm going to go to my domain controller. Okay. And in my domain controller, I'm going to go and browse to a user. So once I see this user, I'm going to just go ahead in here, and I'm just going to modify something. 
you hear this? I'm going to change this object, right? Just the description. Pretty simple stuff, right? But this is going to show that we can go all the way down to specific, you know, object within this uh, this user, right? I'm going to change that, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to my my backup server. I'm going to right click and go Active Directory Add Recovery. Select it. This is all running within my virtual lab right now. So this environment is running in my virtual lab. It's isolated. It's going to ask, okay, what's your domain controller IP address inside of your virtual lab? So this is 192.168.89. I don't know what it is. 89 dot. Eighty-nine dot two oh five. So notice one that I want to make sure everyone's aware of. See the IP address here? 88.129. That's my host. 88.205 is the actual IP address of the VM, right? But I'm going to communicate to that via 89.205. Why? That's the masquerade IP address. So when this VM is spitting up, it's not going to affect anything else that's in my infrastructure. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my backup server. I'm going to go 89.205. And then I'm going to put in my domain controller. My, what's my domain controller IP address? So now I can compare the two. You can actually do a comparison of your Active Directory object. And this one is uh, 88.2. Hit next. It's going to go through. It's going to communicate to my Active Directory server and say, okay, this is the objects I see. I'm going to go down to that John Doe user. Hit next. And at this point, it's going to go ahead and say, hey, this is what's different. Do you see that? Earlier, I changed this right here. The backup was test user account, right? I changed it to GTC demo. I can select it, the description, hit next, and hit next. And then at that point, if I go ahead and click finish here, if I go back to that user account now, if I look at the properties on it, you're going to see that now it's this test user account again. That's how quick it is to restore an Active Directory item. So I can do that for user, computer. I can use that for accounts, right? Because again, we're, what we're doing is we're comparing the two and then facilitating that and say, hey, what do you want to do? Do you want to keep it? Do you want to do something else? And then restoring it back. Questions on that? It do, um, I think, yeah, anything that's presented through the schema. It's just going to show you everything, and then at that point, it's just going to restore back. Yeah, custom attributes, whatever you, you know, whatever you have in place. So that's Active Directory. So that's pretty straightforward. I can delete this user, too, if I wanted to. Let's go ahead and delete it. And I can go ahead and recover it if I wanted to. Same process. Now, that's AD. So about SQL. So how does SQL work? You know, how do I recover something leveraging SQL? Same process. Right-click on my SQL server. And I do SQL item recovery. Notice how everything is pretty much a right-click functionality away. So trying to make it easy to use, right? Trying to make it, trying to make it intuitive, because we're all used to that right-click functionality. So this is the same thing. Right-click, select the system. This is going to be my my backup server, my uh, server inside of my virtual lab, and this is my actual production SQL server. I'm going to actually use my SQL authentication. And I'm going to hit next. And I'm going to restore, let's say, restore database table. Again, I have the ability to do restore database schema, table, or I can restore a SQL query result set. Okay. Hit next here, and I'm going to go. What I'm going to do before that is let me do this. Let me go to my SQL server here, and I'm actually going to connect to my production SQL server. So this is 88201 is my production SQL server. I don't recommend you doing this, but I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to let's refresh this real quick. And I'm going to select this table here, and I'm just going to delete it. <laughs> He's cringing right now. <laughs> and I'm just going to delete this table. It's gone. Right? Now, this could be a delete of a table. This can be somebody running a, hey, let me go ahead and run an updates query and see what happens. And then, you know, kind of bad things happen after that, right? <laughs> or run a, a delete query or an insert statement. Whatever the case may be, something happened. Now you need to recover it. Okay. I go ahead and go back to my server here. Yes, I do not want to change my color schema. Uh, hit my production database. And it's going to basically say, okay, 
which databases do you want to use, backup database and production database, it's communicating to that right now. And then it's going to go ahead and then present both databases and then at that point give you what tables you prefer. Let's go to SharePoint database, hit next. So it's going to go ahead and retrieve, it's going to query, it's going to do its thing. And then once it determines what's different, it's going to present it to you. Again, what we're doing here is backup admin specific, right? This isn't something that your DBA is doing. This is something your backup admin is doing. A lot of times when we talk to our clients, you want to offload this task to your DBA. So why not do this? Open up my, uh, I'm going to open up my SQL Master Studio here. I'm going to hit connect. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to database engine. And I'm just going to type in 89201. Hit connect. And now, this is my virtual app database right through my management studio. So here, I can do the same thing. Go here, browse my tables, find the ones I want, and I can actually do it right through here. I can extract data right through a, a utility that is familiar to the DBA, right? So again, depends on what you want to do. You can have the backup administrator facilitate the recovery, sure. Or you can go ahead and offload and say, hey, Mr. DBA, here's an IP address connect to it via whatever application you have, and run whatever recovery you want. When you're done, tell me. I'll go ahead and remove it. It does not affect the backup. It doesn't change the backup. You can run delete queries all day long in this database. We don't care. Why? Because all that's being written to a delta. And when the virtual lab is completed, stop session is completed, all that's gone. So the database and everything within it never changes. OK? Any questions on how that works? So here, I'm going to go back here real quick here, just to go back to my, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just clear all here. I just want to restore my, just my all docs, because that's when I deleted. Hit next. <clears throat> and then it's going to go ahead and start initiating that recovery process. Any questions on this? Anybody? Is it kind of, is it what you were expecting from an app, you know, from a recovery standpoint, from an enterprise application? Because again, the goal here is to really talk about those components, right? to give you the ability to, to say, hey, how do I recover my SQL? How do I recover my Exchange, my Active Directory? Because really, this webinar is for you guys to understand how we do it. So far, so good? Oh, yes. <laughs> Great. Yeah, my, uh, my laptop is, uh, has a specific set of uh, resources, let's just say, <laughs> and it's not the most beefy. So. But as this process runs through, you have then at that point really a lot of options available to you when you run a recovery, right? This could be an Oracle database, right? There's nothing preventing this from being you know, a MySQL database, an Oracle database, you know, maybe even a web server. Because what's a web server, right? A web server is just a front end to a back end somewhere. Sure, modify the web server, point to the masquerade IP address, access through there. So you have a lot of functionality, a lot of flexibility with the virtual lab to do a lot of different things. But the only thing that you have with Virtual Lab is that, hey, i got to spin up VMs inside of my backup repository, right? So it's leveraging resources. You know, in other words, it's leveraging CPU memory resources on my host. Some, some situations, you might not have the resources available to facilitate that. So for items like Exchange and also SharePoint, what Veeam did was Veeam created what we call Veeam Explorer for, Exchange, well, Veeam Explorer for SharePoint and Exchange. And that does this. Go ahead and do this real quick here. No, let me just go ahead and just restore my tables. Yes, next. Mm -hmm. Restore. Yeah, restoring my database tables real quick here. And then once this restores, it's, you can go back to SQL, run a refresh, and it's going to be there. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and browse to my backups, right? Once I browse to my backup, again, I can go ahead and run direct recovery at a backup. So I just look for whatever backup. So this is my Exchange server here. All I need is right click, and right there is Restore Microsoft Exchange Item. Select it. It's going to go ahead and give you a point in time, what point in time you want to recover from. I'm just going to do, you know, just the current 1.7. It's finished. And it's going to go ahead communicate directly to the virtual machine and then mount that database for you, basically your mail store, 
and give you the ability to run object recovery. Okay? You do not, this process here is not dependent on your exchange server even being up. Why is that important? Well, let's say you have an exchange today that you've backed up. And then 10 years from now, it's exchange 2020 or 2033, or whatever the case may be, right? Not, you don't have the same version somewhere, right? So now you just point to that backup, right click, and you can recover. Pretty quick, pretty simple, right? So here, browse through, go to my user, go to my inbox, right click on any one of these mail items, and recover. That's how fast it takes to recover an exchange item. I can run, I can do a searches on it. I have the ability to do a search, whether that's specifically for the inbox, or that is at the entire data store level, right? Because sometimes you might want to find emails that exist across multiple users. You know, people CC all the time, right? Well, I want to know who has this email in the email box. It'll go through and search for you. Okay? So it gives you that capability to run that recovery and some e-discovery. You know, and again, this is a right-click functionality away. If I want to save this to desktop, save it to desktop, and then at that point it will go ahead and save this email to my desktop. That's how fast it takes to recover an exchange item. Now, whether that's a calendar item, a contact, whatever, it doesn't matter. We run that recovery for you. The same would apply to SharePoint. So if I want to go ahead and do the same recovery in SharePoint, I just go ahead and select my SharePoint server, which is my SQL server. Click application item, SharePoint. Does everybody see how I did that? Let me do that again. That was kind of quick. <laughs> select my server backup, hit the drop down, select SharePoint. Okay. Select it. It's going to go ahead and mount whatever backup you want to recover from. Hit next. Hit next. And finish. It's going to go ahead and mount your SharePoint database with associated content and give you the ability to recover. That's how long it takes to recover a SharePoint item. So again, there's a lot of ways to recover anything, right? It's just how much time do you want to put to do it? How much effort do you want to put into it? Here, browse through my content. Browse through maybe to, you know, your favorite, my favorite, Contoso. <laughs> uh, content. And let's go ahead and go to share documents. And here I can just, you know, right click away. I can open it, save it, send it, restore it. I can do searches against, you know, specific you know, text I'm looking for with the name. All built in out of the box. So what I'm showing you here is what you would get out of the box. This is all built in functionality. Go ahead. Standard will give you this. You can't restore back to the original location, though. You can only save it out. Exactly. Veeam is dependent. Oh, the question. The question was, what? How does Veeam facilitate or handle? RDMs or physical raw data, raw device mappings, right? How do we really do that? Go ahead, just do that real quick. How does Veeam accommodate for physical raw device? Right now, Veeam is dependent on the ability to create a VMware-based snapshot. So Veeam cannot create a VMware-based snapshot. Physical RDMs does not provide for that ability to create uh, a, a snapshot. So we wouldn't be able to handle those systems. Now, the question I usually ask a lot of our customers that are looking at using you know, physical RDMs or RDMs in general is why? But uh, is it because of performance, right? Some people say RDMs are faster. Is it because of size limitations, right? Because an RDM is not restricted to just that 1.95, whatever it is, you know, terabyte limitation that is currently in VMware, well, in 5.1. Or is it more of a Microsoft clustering concern, right? I want to leverage Microsoft SQL clusters, and Microsoft says I have to use RDMs, right? So once we have an understanding of what it is they're trying to achieve, then we ask them the question, if you're saying it's performance, well, VMware states performance is minor. It doesn't differ between an RDM versus a, a, uh, a virtual disk. You know, if it's any improvement, it's very minute in nature in general. That's what VMware's saying, right? There's also saying that from a size limitation, well, 5.5 supports 64 terabytes. That's no, longer, that's no longer a concern then, right? Then the last thing is, okay, well, I need clustering. I need to leverage Microsoft cluster. Why? Can't you just use log shifting? Can't you just, you know, can't you just, there's, you use Veeam to replicate. There's so many different ways you can handle it, right? Not to say clustering is bad, but I've seen less and less people leverage Microsoft Cluster. Especially with Exchange. You have DAGs. Why, <laughs> right? There's, there's a lot of reasons. There are other reasons why you might leverage physical RDMs. There's a, you know, there's some, some SAN multipathing issues that leverages it. 
Yeah, Sam Multipathy. So that's usually the ones I've seen that most people are kind of like, ah, I gotta leverage it somehow. That's where we, you know, that's where we see a lot of that. You know, and that's why again, it's understanding what it is that is hap actually happening. Some people just say, well, RDMs are a lot faster. Yeah, not necessarily. So, questions? Exactly. Yeah, so even Microsoft itself is putting technology in place to basically say there's no point, right? So yeah, again, people do have it, but to your point again, uh, we do not have the ability to facilitate a snapshot of RDM, so we'd have to look at a virtual disk to do that. Other questions? Concerns? So far so good? Was I talking really, really fast? <laughs> I sometimes do that. So if I do talk fast, feel free to say, hey, Tom, slow down. No problem. Um, but from the standpoint of the applications, we talked about, again, SharePoint. So if I can move this down. We talked about our ability to recover exchange items, right? We talked about our SQL Server. So if I go back to my SQL Server here, right, if I refresh on my, oh, that's my other one. If I go ahead and go back to my 88, notice there's no odd docs there. If I go ahead and refresh this guy, there's my table, right? That's the one I just restored. Again, who do you want to have running your backups, right? Do you want or oh, running your recovery? Do you want to just, here you go, DBA? Or you can do it yourself. You have that functionality, you have that flexibility within Veeam to accommodate all that. Okay? Now, with any system, of course, you know, you always have the capability to restore, restore individual guest items. Again, we talked about this earlier. I want to restore just a file, right? Sure, why not? And what's really nice is this. I'm going to restore a file on my Exchange server. I can also, once in, I'm in this interface, I can actually browse to my database and actually initiate my recovery through there too. So you know, I'm in Exchange server trying to extract a file and I go, oh, you know what? I need to restore an Exchange item. No problem, browse through the database and go ahead and run recovery right through there. So I'll show you how we do that also. So as long as we have access to that database file, you can recover it right through here. So if I go here, I go to, let's say, Program Files, go Microsoft, Exchange Server, and then go to mailbox, I can actually go to my mailbox database, go down to my EDB file, double click it, and it will initiate my VM Explorer for exchange. So right through my browser window, my file recovery, I can actually initiate an exchange of recovery. The same would apply for SharePoint. Just browse through the database. You know, if you're backing it up, browse through the database, double click it, and it will initiate that process for you. Questions, concerns? So what I have now is we've gone through you know, all the applications that I consider you know, application, you know, enterprise-based applications. I want to open it up for questions. You know, do you guys have questions, anything that we did not address during the presentation that you'd like to have answered? Again, anything you like? We've got seven minutes. <laughs> yeah, I do have a couple questions for you. Sure. Um, it's not about Mm -hmm. The GCC cloud, we have the R backup mm -hmm. with our cloud offering, and we have a lot of customers who are concerned with API compliance. Mm -hmm. And in order to meet API compliance, the data has to be encrypted on their side mm -hmm. before even it can be granted. So can we do that for both hybrid and hybrid CDN? Right now, we have, so let me repeat the question. So the question really, long story short, does VM encrypt at rest? <laughs> right? Does, does Veeam encrypt at rest? Does Veeam take a backup, and once we back it up, can we encrypt that backup? Ooh. Can you back it up before it reaches the disk? So it's replication. Yes. So again, repeating the question. So can Veeam encrypt at rest, and can Veeam encrypt in transit? <laughs> right. <laughs> so essentially, long story short. At rest and in transit. So let me let me let me let me address in transit first. Yes, Veeam does encrypt in transit right now. So if you want to take data and encrypt and pass data from point A, your source, to target, Veeam will encrypt that data traffic over your over your wire. The next part of that question. Okay, so if you can encrypt in transit, both in replication and in backup. So in both situations, you know, while we're backing up, we will encrypt. In conjunction, if we're replicating, we will encrypt. Will you encrypt at rest? Right now, no. Operative words right now, no. 
Because right now, Veeam is dependent on whatever solution you currently have in place to facilitate that encryption at rest. Because it's not just your backup, right? If you have encryption requirements, it's not just, hey, I want to encrypt your backup file. There's other underlining requirements saying that it's not just your backup, it's other files, right? It's other things. It's because your backup is just one component. Your data comprises of a lot of other different components, right? How about your systems? How do you encrypt your systems, your laptops, your servers? Do you? Don't you? Right? So there's all these different questions that we ask. But at the end of the day, if it's just a checkbox, I want to encrypt this file. Sure, I can go to my system right now. I can go ahead and browse to my backup. And I can go ahead and just go to any of my backup files, right click on it, go properties, and I can go ahead and just encrypt, right? What's to prevent me to doing this? Because this, in theory, is encrypting at rest. And this right here, if I encrypt this file right now as the way it is, and I take this file and I give it to somebody else, unless they're the NSA, they're not opening it, right? Because it's encrypted. Okay, does that meet the requirement, right? Now, if it doesn't meet the requirement, then the question is what will meet the requirement? Right? Is it a specific algorithm? I need 1024-bit encryption using you know, AES or whatever the case may be. Right? Finding out and determining what that is will then help us define how to encrypt the file. But if it's just a checkbox, there's nothing preventing us from checking it here, and it's encrypted. Veeam will be able to understand that it's encrypted. Why? It's in the operating system. Right? As long as this user account has access to that private key, because that's what's required, that private key encryption, right? then we can decrypt it and actually read it. If we don't have access to it, of course, we're not going to be able to open it too. Is that kind of answer your question? So operative words I just said there is not right now. I've heard, again, this is a webinar, so I can't really say too much about it, but in the future, you know, we're always looking at improving the product <laughs> that will have capabilities to do certain things like you know, maybe encrypt our rest and you know, so on and so forth. Are there any other questions? Does that, does that kind of give you an understanding of what Veeam does? Yes. So both in transit and in rest? Perfect. Any other questions? Go ahead. It is native in Veeam. So when, you, when we do our backup job, there's a checkbox that basically says, you know, within our proxy server, encrypt this data and transit. So our proxy server is actually facilitating that, uh, that data movement and controlling the, the encryption when it actually passes data across. So if, the, uh, if our backup server or proxy server is facilitating the, uh, the transmission between the stand and the repository, then yes. But outside of Veeam, no. Of course, you know, we don't control any of that. But within Veeam, if we're doing the backup, then yes, it'll, it'll encrypt that transit, it'll encrypt that data. Yeah, it's, just, it's literally just a checkbox. So if I go into my Veeam server, it's, uh, if I go to my backup infrastructure, my proxies, it's like, it's essentially a checkbox to encrypt the data. Uh, yeah, it's actually in the job. Yeah, it's uh, the ability to really encrypt this, you know, to, in transit, it's just out of the box for us at this point. It's a checkbox. I just got to find out where it's at. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's in, I, oh, I'll find it for you. But absolutely, it doesn't matter whether, because the way that we pass data, you know, whether it's through the virtual infrastructure, whether it's through the actual um, data store, you know, without the SAN integration, or with the SAN integration, it's still the same block, in the same location. The only difference between the two is that with SAN integration, we're leveraging the snapshot on the actual SAN itself to uh, facilitate the backup, whereas in a uh, traditional backup, we're actually leveraging the VMware snapshot. But in both cases, the data being passed across is going to be you know, controlled via the proxy server. And then that will basically in, in, you know, control the, uh, the encryption of that data. Anything else? Any other questions? 
All right, guys, well, I give you guys one minute of your life back. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I am Ton. If you have any questions or concerns, I'll be here to help out and answer anything you guys need. Thank you again for your time. Thank you.